It was hard to tell if it was the rain or tears of joy that flowed on people's faces that soggy October 22, 2014, as ground was broken for the brand new Fairmont Heights High School. This is a proud day for all of us. We have been waiting and waiting and waiting for this moment. The long-awaited replacement of the 67-year-old school has been an emotional crusade for Fairmont Heights, a community that prides itself on having the only pre-integration African-American high school in Prince George's County still operating as a high school. Proud, too, are they of the strong familial bonds formed during the Civil Rights Crucible that for most have lasted a lifetime. Always, when you meet any of the students from Fairmont Heights, mm -hmm. anywhere you go, when you meet somebody from Fairmont Heights High School, they are so happy to see one another. Mm -hmm. That kind of relationship that Mr. Goslin instilled in us as Fairmont Heights high school family, this will linger on and on and on. For teachers and alumni from the 1950s, like Christine Tillman, the reality of the new school is almost too good to be true. Were you a class officer, a pom-pom, cheerleader? I was a student council president. All right. And I am the student that spoke for the dedication of Fairmont Heights High when it was first built. How do you feel, though, about being there for the dedication of the new Fairmont Heights? It'll be like you're coming I full am, circle. I am looking forward to it. Yeah. I am really and truly looking forward to it. Well, for Christine and everyone who loves Fairmont Heights, the wait is over. The new home of the Hornets is open for business and ready to start making some history of its own. With the sleek lines and glisten of a new age airport terminal, the new Fairmont Heights High School, like an airport, is poised to offer students tickets to just about anywhere they'd like to go. Be it off to college, to careers, or into military service, the students at Fairmont's new home will find the offerings and amenities in a class all their own. The thing that's great about working with Prince George's County is that when they, uh, build new buildings. They want to make sure that everybody understands that they're second to none. Uh, it, this is uh, going to be a state-of-the-art building uh, and, and that's what the county wanted. As they enter the 78.8 million dollar jewel of a school set on 42 acres near what was once the Prince George's Country Club, students and visitors alike can see modernity everywhere they look. There's the big and the bold like the 750-seat auditorium and 10,000-square-foot gymnasium, as well as the cool and the chic. Check out the Media Center, a cutting-edge communications hub, the Black Box Theater for aspiring thespians, and actual gardens on the roof. And that's just the beginning of the wow factors. If you were a student coming in that day, what do you think would be most impressive to you uh, in terms of the bells and whistles that are user-friendly. When they go to their first classroom and the new finishes, um, the amazing millwork, the lighting fixtures, the light in the classrooms, the technology in the teaching, in the teaching surfaces, um, digital smart boards, which they don't have um, very much of right now, um, the fact that they will all have Every single one. This is a one-to-one -one ratio school. Everybody will have a Chromebook. But for all its size and dazzle, the new Fairmont Heights High School feels like a small town with two learning communities in one building. One for environmental sciences and another for information technology. It's a cozy arrangement that will increase academic rigor and just as important, acquaint students with a storied Fairmont family tradition that dates to 1950 and is still going strong. You have generations that have never gone away, that continue to stay involved. And it is like a village raising kids. They continue to be involved in these kids' lives. 
And so when I when I saw this building start to take shape, I said, wow, it looks like a it looks like a bunch of buildings. It actually looks like a village. And that's the whole thing around Fairmont. I tell everybody, Fairmont Heights is my alma mater. I don't care what college you went to, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. The high school that you graduated from, that's your true alma mater. Mm -hmm. And that's what Fairmont Heights is to me. They call me Mr. Fairmont Heights. It, it filled my life with joy and happiness. We're, we're a family that's so tight that we all love each other. We talk about ourselves to other people that go to other high schools, graduate from other high schools. They can't believe that Fairmont Heights was like that. So do not hang from the chandelier. You know, that was one of the first very favorite saying, you know, don't be seen swinging from the chandelier, you know. And, and they taught us about community, you know, about helping one another and, and uh, about life, you know, about life. Uh, 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 so, uh, and that's why I, I, I love my school. You know, there's nothing I wouldn't do for Fairmont Heights. In fact, Tommy Broadwater came to Fairmont's rescue in the 1970s when the high cost of renovation threatened the school's continued existence. When the governor let me talk, I started explaining this, Brown Heights and how great it was. And Louis Goldstein spoke up, said, Rob Water. He said, you know, I was over that way about three weeks ago, riding through that area. And I saw that school, that this school you say you go to, I saw that school. And that's a nice school. That triumph, a nice school indeed, is just part of the lore of a school that's long been associated with extraordinary scholarship and leadership. Principal G. James Golson, who served the school from 1950 to 1969, was renowned for preaching and modeling professional excellence, for sending his seniors on an annual trip to New York City, and for cruising the Fairmont neighborhood himself, looking for those who dared to be truant. The principal knew all the kids. He knew, he knew them by name or by face. He didn't know them. He would go out sometimes in the day and he would see them. He'd come back and say, Miss Crutchfield, I saw such and such a person out there. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? And I'd go through the files and find out. Call his mama. Get his mama here. <laughs> the principal was extraordinary. Mm -hmm. uh, he was the best principal in the county. And if he had been white, he'd have been superintendent. Every Monday we had a faculty meeting. And he would bring in the best uh, people to come in to talk with the faculty and to teach us things. Mm -hmm. He was a real educator. I was a misfit, you know, because my mom worked at the school. Mm -hmm. I had to present myself in a certain way to the guys, you know. And then the, yeah. when she would put guys out of school, they want to come after me. Your mom put me out. I said, Mom didn't put you out. Mr. Golson put you out. She just gave you the paper. Pierre Crutchfield's no-win situation was the exception at Fairmont, where college and career readiness has long been the mission. For while many of today's students are preparing for IT careers, often in private industry, in the 1950s, the focus was developing clerical skills to work for the federal government and taking a class called The Apartment, where students learned interior decorating and how to play house for real. We taught kids how to, uh, uh, home economics taught kids how to keep home. And we had it actually a park. And we taught them how to decorate it and how to keep it well organized and manage it and how to shop for groceries. And everything it required you to do in a, a home. Our mission was to teach students to pass the shorthand and typing test. Because there were so few blacks that were able to pass those tests to get into the government because it was segregated at that time. So our main goal was to teach them to pass those tests. And we were successful because many of the graduates passed that test and went on to become middle, you know, managers and administrators and so forth. So I'm proud of that. I think I had a part in that. Did you get a good education there? I think I really got a good ed education, you know. Um, I didn't go into the, um, the studies that I really wanted to because, you know, growing up poor, you think that you can't afford to do these things that mm -hmm. these kids can do now and they don't take advantage of. Mm -hmm. So I did the next best thing. I went into a business uh, course so that I could work when I got <laughs> I came out of school. Times might have changed, but mercifully, Fairmont's zeal, 
and the quirky spelling of its name have not. The missing U still missing after a contractor's error in 1934 when naming the Fairmont Elementary School has been enshrined ever since. However you spell it, Fairmont has always been about academics, practical knowledge, and what counts above all else, character. We had the best teachers. And each time when I see a teacher of mine who's no longer living, I would tell them, hey, thank you. Because what for you, where would I have been? But you taught me, you uh, taught me how to take care of myself and how to be a person of good nature. If opening day reactions are any guide, it's quite likely that 67 years from now, today's students and teachers will be reminiscing about how lucky they were to be part of the Fairmont Heights family. It's, it's a really a magnificent feeling um, coming back to you know the school that I graduated from. It's, it's awesome to give back. Um, it's kind of bittersweet because my class was actually supposed to graduate from this building uh, back in 2012, but you know the building wasn't ready back then. So, but it's good that I get that I get to come back to teach at the new building. What do you feel about this brand new school? It's something else. It's awesome, yeah. actually. It's it's very awesome. I'm I'm excited too for this school year because I'm a senior. You're a senior, so you're gonna be in the first graduating class of the new Fairmont Heights. Yes, sir. Wow. What do you want to do next year? Go straight to college. But amid all the euphoria for the new, there was nostalgia for the old. Kind of missing the old school, because like, we, uh, for me, I grew up in old school. I learned a lot about myself, and it was more so self-discovery. But like, this school is really good for like the next classes, because it's state of the art. It's new, it's, it's not as run down. We, like, the ceilings were like falling out of the old school. I'm happy about it because of the fields, because I'm like, I'm really into athletics and stuff, but I'm happy that I can walk in the hallway and it's just, it's new. Yeah, but I still, yeah. I do love it and I love the school and the atmosphere. But your heart is still over there on Nye Street. Yeah, the old, uh, the old Fairmont. Architect Jonathan Hill waxed wistful too, standing atop the spacious and spectacular building he designed. He mused about what might have been for his younger self. Would you want to go to this high school, turn the clock back. Would you want to go here? I want to just come out and hang out here. <laughs> Much less, I'm, I'm jealous of the students that are going to be able to go to school here. It should be fantastic. Yes, fantastic. Congratulations to the Fairmont Heights community on its new high school, a cathedral of learning whose future alumni are poised to write a new lesson in Fairmont history a lesson that will teach us anew the values that never go out of style. This is Dave Zarin reporting.